This is the Deep Cool Mystique 360, one of the coolest AIOs that I have had here for a while. Of course, this is still an AIO. We got the pretty regular 360 millimeter radiator with about 19 FPI, about 400 millimeter long sleeved tubes, which are adjustable at the water block. And I would have hoped for them to be a little bit longer, but there we are. We got three in-house made fans that can spin up to 2150 RPM whilst pushing up to 72 point 45 CFM at up to 4.32 millimeters of H2O. They have a quite short cable, which is daisy chainable and can be extended using the usual four pin PWM extension cable. All very, very standard, but what isn't standard is this thing here. This is the magnificently sharp 2.8 inch LCD screen. Deep cool words, not mine. This thing is powered by a uh, SATA power connection and has to be hooked up to your motherboard using an older USB 2.0 header. And that thing does look freaking cool. It's sharp, it can display important metrics, and it's easy. You got a tiny amount of software, and with tiny amount, I mean that the software isn't bloated with, let's say, unnecessary crap that nobody needs anyway. It's kept very simple. You can adjust a few settings, like how you want to display it, or if you want to run wild and, and just display it. GIFs, or even frequencies, or, or temperature recordings, like as a graph. All kinds of cool stuff. And it has a built-in gyroscope, because pressing a button once would be too much for the end user. But yes, no matter in what direction you install the AEO, you can also allow it to just auto-adjust and turn the image around, which is cool. Overall, this thing works like a charm, and Deepcool did a great job with that. And it even got a tiny amount of RGB. You can manually set it to whatever you like using the 3-pin RGB cable, or you can set it via software to just match whatever you show on the screen. And it's not like in your face. Unlike the monitor, it's uh, subtle some back glow looks nice. And that's the case for the AIO as a whole, I believe. Everything looks nice and modern, simple, feels high quality, like for example, the rubber on the rubber blocks, basically, on the fans. Everything seems good. And before I forget it, there is a copper base. And the version I got doesn't include the newest Intel mounting hardware on paper, though LGA17 and 1851 are theoretically compatible and the online version of the manual just labels LGA1700 and LGA 1851 as the exact same thing, so uh, yeah. Let's talk about installation. To get the cooler going on Intel, we need to take the provided backplate, adjust the corners to the sockets that we are using, and place it behind the motherboard. On the other side, add the spacers, label it with your socket. Over on AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed retention bracket and replace them with these spacers. Now, on the water block side, we need to take either the Intel or AMD retention brackets and screw them into the block. The orientation doesn't really matter here. You can spin the thing in 360 and theoretically everything should perform identical, but uh, the usual position is with the tubes towards the ramp. But you can theoretically do whatever you want, nobody's stopping you. Once the brackets are on there, slap some thermal paste onto the chip and screw the cooler down using the thumb screws. With the installation covered, let's get to the one big problematic thing for today. It's a, it's a really big problem. First are benchmarks on Intel. For those, we use a 3900K and three presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. Each starts off at a 100% fan speed and then we slowly lower it in 10% steps whilst keeping the pump running at 100% all the time. At 120 watts going through the socket, the Mystique 360 AIO performed abysmally bad. Keeping the chip at 31.8 degrees C above ambient might be a good result for an air cooler, but for a top of the line AIO or expensive AIO, not so much. And the corresponding noise to performance chart looks even worse. To make this clear, this thing performs like an air cooler. Like a good air cooler, mind you, but an extremely loud air cooler, but an air cooler nonetheless. And it took me quite a while to understand what's going on here. And I, I guess I know it now, but at the time, due to air extractor like 5.0 reasons, because I, I have like a, how should I say, a tube that I, like a, like a big tube, uh, which I used to, uh, to take away hot air generated by, by coolers or by, by, by my benchmark machines. And that thing is loud, so I, I can't hear it. But to give you an idea what's going on, listen to this. Yeah, I guess something in there isn't working as it should. Now, the benchmark results do make sense. After everything, I cross-checked my results with other people and, well, it is never a top-of-the-line AIO, but it's good. Seems to be better on AMD than Intel, 
uh, but still, something about my pump is just broken. That said, I will still show you all the results I have generated. Not that I want to make Deepcool look bad here, but reviewers can get broken devices too. To make this very clear, Deepcool sent this over. Shit happens, and in this case shit did happen, but ex exactly the same shit would have happened if uh, somebody else or if this AIO would have found its way into the into a shell. It would be much much worse in that case because a, a end user would end up with a broken AIO. He might not know that the AIO is broken because it still functions. It just functions bad. But uh, yeah, that's why I will still show it. And unfortunately, I am now part of the statistic that people love to use and say AIOs are less reliable than air coolers. And um, I mean, I, I was always replying to that. I never had a broken AIO. And now I'm part of that, that statistic. And to be honest, I never had a DOA air cooler. That's, this is the first for me. So let's do this quickly. At 250 watts, it stayed the same with the Mystique 360 doing 62.2 degrees C above ambient, keeping the title as the worst performing 360 AIO on my chart. The noise to performance graph, on the other hand, looks even worse. Now the Mystique got flat out outpaced by the D15G2 and every other AIO. And at 320 watts, you get the drill. 83.4 degrees C above ambient with a abysmally bad noise to performance ratio. Over on AMD, we benchmarked on a 7950X 3D where we measure the sustained average clock speed across all cores at any given fan speed to create a noise to performance ratio. During all of that, of course, the pump again at 100% or in my Mystique's case, Similarly to the Intel results, the Mystique 360 is comparable to the D15G2. It's just like before and never makes it to noise floor because, you know. So where does this leave us? Well, the monitor is great. The AIO just doesn't work. I will contact Deepcool about this and ask them for a new sample. The old results will just disappear and if the results are like so freaking good, I will maybe make a new video. But for today, although I am very clearly saying these results do not reflect how this AIO should perform, there is an important lesson here. First of all, there, there is no golden sampling for reviewers, that, that's one thing. And shit can go wrong, and it did go wrong here. And if it does, the performance might end up being really, really bad. But to finish this for today, the Mystique AIO is going for around 160 euros right here and now, which is not that hefty considering you got a full-blown screen that can be customized, but before I, I give any opinion on yay or nay, I would need to know how this thing actually performs. But okay, for today we're going to end it here and I hope that Deepcool has another one of these lying around because, uh, yeah, frankly, I mean, <laughs> I'm now part of a stat that I didn't want to be part of, but yeah. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to build a quieter air extractor. Seems like mine is just a little bit too loud, and I, uh, yeah, I wasted like 12 hours of benchmarks because of a broken pump, which I didn't hear, so that's that. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Deepcool Assassin 4S, a cooler that for once actually works. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.